your app has a user profile, you're going to want to watch this video. Over the past 10 years, I have worked on a variety of platforms and each one had a user profile. I'll say that in some cases, we didn't have user adoption of their profile. Setting up a user profile is difficult because there are three states. You have the public facing profile, the preview for the user that is creating the profile, and the edit state of the profile where the user can update the contents within. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a user facing profile so they can preview it and make edits before they go public and try to get followers and things. So grab that popcorn. Let's dive in. Now that I've learned how to set up the user profile, I want to show you guys how to. What we're going to do is come down to this drop down and we're going to open up a new page called profile. So for this example, I'll just add a new page for you guys and we'll name it profile two. So I'll go ahead and create it. So the first thing you want to do is select a group over here in the left hand and you just want to draw it in the middle. This way we can have like a centered layout. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is just get an image. We can name it profile pick. Okay. We can give it a dimension of, you know, 120 by 120. And we're going to center it in the middle of this. What we can do is select this group and we can make sure that it's also kind of centered in the page as well. I'm going to grab our image and I'm going to come down here to where it says roundness. And I'm just going to do 120 because that should give us a perfect circle. Uh, it's not really showing up. Let's give it a solid style. There we go. Now we can see it. The next part we're going to need is just simple text. And this text, I believe it's going to be like the username. So we can even call it that user name. Well, let's go ahead and remove the body styling and give it a center styling. So it's in alignment with our circle. And I'll go ahead and bold that because it's pretty important. The next part is we're going to go ahead and get this image from somewhere. And so since it's a dynamic image, we can come over here and we can actually click this dynamic image area and say insert dynamic data. And we can get the current users profile pick. Now I have it here because I created it. So you'd have to create a new field and you type in profile pick and you select the type called image and you click create. I've already done that. So I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to set it to the current user's profile pick and then I'll click away. So it turns blue and now we're all happy. Watch what happens when I refresh. It gets my profile picture because we set it to the current user's profile pick. Now this is a preview of our profile. It's not the public facing one. That would be a different page. So for today's video, we're just doing the personal preview. Okay. So now that we have that, we can come down here to the username section here. It just says edit me for now. Well, we can actually select in here and say insert dynamic data again. And we can say get the current users username. Again, I would come down here to create a new field and we're going to say username and the type is just text and then you can create it. I've already created it. So I'll just click cancel and here I'll say get username. Okay. Get current users name. Click away, it turns blue. Now I'll close that and go ahead and preview. And there it is. So this is the beginning of our profile page. One thing that's really important to us at Humdrum is the audio recordings. That's the person's activity on our platform. So we can get a repeating group here. We can pull it in and we drop it in here and we can resize it. I'm gonna do like a 320 width and I will center that horizontally in here. I'm just make sure it's inside that group. It feels like it's not. Okay, center horizontally. I'm gonna do extended vertical scrolling. That way it shows more as it goes on. I'll just leave it all the settings the way they are. The next step is the type of content. I'm gonna select audio recordings from our last video where we set up the audio recording. The data source is gonna be the do a search for, the type audio recordings. The constraint is created by equals current user because they're facing their own profile and then we can sort by the created date descend that way the most recent one is on top now we can close that and click away so it turns blue the next step here is we need to add our details in here you can actually create a reusable element i actually did i created one called audio card and I can just grab that and drag it in here. So there's my 
reusable element and I still have to do a data source and get the current cells audio recordings. So now let's go ahead and click preview. So here we have our profile picture, our name and the files this person has made. One, two, three, one, two, three. And there you could hear that file was sourced from there. Now, how do we get back to the index page or the home page? Well, we're going to need a back button. So let's come back to the editor. And what I'm going to do is grab an icon. I'm just going to drag it, put it right here. And it's going to be a Chevron left like this. And then I can do a start edit workflow. It's really simple. When this is clicked, we're going to navigate to the index page, which is also known as the home page. And so now we have a way to go back. Another thing we will need is a logout button. So I'm just going to put text up here because it's not like a super important thing, but I'm just going to say logout and I'm going to remove the style from the body and I'm going to give it a right alignment. Here you can see it's kind of hanging off there. I'm going to put it in the top right here, shrink it down a little bit because I don't want any phantom clicks on that. And there we have our logout button. What I'll do is select this and double click it, start edit workflow. And here you can see when that's clicked, we are merely going to go to account and log the user out. So let's now preview again. And here you can see we have our back button and the logout. Now, how did I get this profile picture? All right, let's do that next. So. In order to get that profile picture, I'm gonna to go to the index page really quickly here. I'm gonna hide the splash screen that we worked on in the last video, and I'm gonna show group A. All I did was grab an image and I drug it over here. Okay, and you can see it's quite large. I knew that I wanted something that was like clickable with an index finger. So 45 by 45 is the minimum for an index finger because it's in the top area where the index can hit. And for the appearance, I went to the roundness and you know, you can just put 45 again. I can give it a little solid border so we can see it. And there we are. The image needs to be dynamic. We're gonna get the current user's profile pic. And now let's go ahead and preview and you're gonna see there's my image. Now I need it on click. So I'll go to start edit workflow. We have, it's called image C right now, but when that's clicked, we can navigate to the profile page. So let's come back here and refresh and that will take us to our profile page and that will take us back. So now we have our profile picture on our home page so people can get back and forth. But what if I want to edit it? All right. So that's the next step. Let's go back to design and back to profile two. So this group is just called group A right now. I'm going to go ahead and change this to call be called preview because this is us looking at our preview. We're going to need a, another group. So what I'm going to do is right click, copy and paste. Now I'm going to bring the second one down here. Now this one, instead of copy, I'm going to call it edit. Now I don't want the edit view to show up all the time. We do want to have these collapse when hidden. So we're going to come in here and we're going to collapse this element's height when hidden. Yes. Same thing here. Collapse this element's height when hidden because we, we need to toggle back and forth between these two. So I'm going to go to workflow and I'm going to click here to add an event and I'm going to go to general pages loaded on page load. We are going to simply go to element actions and show preview and go to element actions and hide edit on page load. So every time this page is loaded, it shows the preview and hides the edit state. So let's go see if that worked. Refresh. Let's go to that profile two page and see if it worked. Okay, you can see that the edit is not there. So how do we get it to show up? We're gonna need an edit button. Let's add an icon to our preview area and we're gonna say edit and we get this handy dandy little pencil. It's kind of just hanging out there by all the things it can edit. And so what we'll do is add a start edit workflow. So when this is clicked, we are going to go to element actions. We're going to show edit and we're going to element actions and hide preview and those things should collapse when hidden. So let's go see if that worked. Let's preview it. Okay. Let's hit here. Mm. Oh, oh, that's because they're the same. We haven't really changed them. So let's go back to design. We're going to come down here to the edit one. And how do we change this? Well, we no longer need these two, but we can use them as a reference. What we can do is come down here. There is a picture uploader. So we're going to grab the picture uploader. 
and we're going to put it right over the top of that image and we're going to give it the same height and width 120. Its dynamic image is also going to be current user's profile pic when it's loaded. That will enable us to click it and change it. So we're going to have to add a action for that as well. The next thing that we're going to do, replace this with our input form and I'm going to trace right over it as well. And this is going to be called the user name input. Okay? Username input and this is going to be called uh, the profile picture input. Right, so we have these two inputs now. I don't really need this section here, so I'm just gonna remove it. It's not something that we're gonna need. And I also don't need logout. I also don't need this back button either, but I could change it to a X just in case. So let's say times, just in case the, the user wants to abandon all things. When they click this X, we can start and edit the workflow. And all we have to do is say element actions, hide, edit, and element actions, show preview go back to design and that way it'll just take us right back where we were in the case that there's no changes now with this input field i'm going to say goodbye to the old one bye bye and i'm going to send this one to the back and we can say bye to the other one we also want this one to be rounded it removes the style and here's the roundness and we can say 120 just like that so now it is the same shape this is called the username input and the initial content actually will be get the current user's username. And this initial content is also get the current users. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and preview. And here you can see our profile. When we click this, we're able to change that. But uh-oh, there's no save button. So let's come back over here. First thing I wanna do is make sure that this field here is actually centered. So I'm gonna remove its styling. And I'm just gonna center it and bold it. That way it looks like what it's replacing. The next thing I'm gonna do is get a button over here in this visual elements area and I'm going to make it the same width as our username and I'm just going to say save. So how do we now update that user? Well, we have to click this and we have to do a start edit workflow because when this is clicked, we are going to go to data and we're going to make a changes to a thing called current user. And we're going to add another field and this one's going to be the profile picture and we're going to add another field called the username. For the profile picture, we're going to get the profile picture input value. And for the username, we're going to get the username input value. And that's it. Look at that all blue. Oh, and then in order to see that change, we're going to have to go to navigation and actually refresh the page. And that's it. Now let's go back here and let's refresh. Okay. So if I wanted to edit my picture, I could come here. And what if I wanted to change it to this avatar here? It's changed. And what if I wanted to change this to a different username? I'll click save, it'll refresh, and there it is. I know that's pretty minuscule compared to maybe some of the profiles that you guys were thinking of out there, but I wanted to make this video for you so you know just how easy it is to create a user profile. Hope you enjoyed that video on how to create your user profile for your web app. If you liked the video, click the like button. If you loved it, subscribe and click the bell notification to be notified about the next one where we continue to work on reusable elements or components in your bubble app. See you there, bye-bye.